Hey, good morning, Lake Worth Christian School. My name is Jason Sanchez, and uh, I am coming to you via video from Bashiniva, Chihuahua, Mexico. For those of you who've never heard of it before, which most of you probably have not, it is a small little town in the beautiful state of, uh, of Chihuahua, uh, in the beautiful Sierra Madres, and we are five hours south of El Paso, Texas. And uh, this has been our home for my wife and daughter and I uh, for the past eight years, as the Lord called us to move from Seattle, Washington, uh, to come down here to purchase property and to begin building uh, an orphanage, uh, which is now uh, called the House of Blessing Orphanage. And uh, God has just done incredible things. He took a uh, 40 acres, which was a, a dead, apple orchard and he has turned it into the growing property that we have we have our main campus our main orphanage housing we have dormitories we have a coffee shop we have offices we have a computer lab we have staff housing and god just has done incredible things and it has been such a blessing partnering with so many different churches and schools and individuals in the states um, to help make this possible. One of those churches has been uh, my boy Daniel's church, Pastor Daniel, who pastors Redemption Church. And uh, he has been such a blessing. The church um, body has come down here a number of times. Uh, I've been out there a number of times to share. And uh, Daniel's one of my best friends. And so I was so excited when he asked me to share a word with you all. Just something that the Lord has been speaking to my heart. And I will admit, um, God has been speaking a lot of things to my heart, especially over the past six months, especially during this time of this global pandemic where everything has just stopped. Everything has seemed to stand still. And we're all in this period of waiting. And I don't know about you guys, but that is a big struggle for me. Um, waiting, patience, uh, I am a go, go, go person. Um, things have been go, go, go um, since we've really been down here. Um, in a different way, things take a lot slower uh, to get moving, but once they get moving, they really get moving. And uh, the year 2020, man, it was supposed to be uh, our busiest year. Uh, we were looking forward to all the mission teams that were coming down, to the interns that were coming down, to the fundraisers we were doing, golf tournaments. Uh, we had our normal one in Washington, and then we had one scheduled in the beautiful state of Florida. I was supposed to be out there in May uh, for the golf tournament, sharing at a church, um, just all of these things, and then all of that changed. And then we're just thrust into this period of, God, what, what are you going to do? What, what's going to happen? Um, is this it? Is this the end? Is this, as things are closing, as, as things are shutting down, as things are being canceled, it, you just, you, you're thrust into this area of what is going to happen. And that is when we really need to lean um, on the Lord. We really need to press into him. We really need to seek him and we need to say, Lord, uh, I believe you're still here. I believe you're still working. I want to believe that, Lord. You got to lead me. You got to guide me. You got to speak to me. Um, and so as I was doing my devotions, I was reading um, in the book of Numbers. If you have your Bible, turn to Numbers. We're going to go old school this morning. It's in the Old Testament, the book of Numbers, chapter um, 9. And so I was, I was just doing my devotions, drinking my coffee, sitting outside, and I came across these verses in chapter 9, verses 15 through 23, and I was just blown away. And I was blown away at how these things were taking place thousands and thousands of years ago, and yet the same God that was there, the same God that was there with the children of Israel is the same God that is here with us this morning. Amen? Aren't you thankful for that? Aren't you thankful for a God that is not moved or bound or hindered at all by things like the coronavirus or a pandemic. In fact, I believe that it is in those times that he wants to do uh, bigger and greater things, even when it doesn't make any sense. But it causes us to have to place our faith and trust in the Lord. And so um, as we sort of, let me do a little backstory into what is going on here before we kind of highlight some of the key points here. Basically, the children of Israel, uh, they have been in captivity in Egypt under Pharaoh. 
uh, things were very difficult. They were very challenging for them. They began crying out. The Bible says that their cries and their grumbles came up. The Lord heard it. And then he went to save his people. And he sent uh, Moses and Aaron. And they went before Pharaoh, of course. You should know the story, the 10 plagues, and all the drama that it took place before the nation of Israel were finally allowed to be let go. And uh, so when they were released and they were able to leave Egypt to travel to the promised land, this was the land that God had promised to give them. The Bible says a land flowing of milk and honey, and it was this beautiful place that they were to inhabit. And it was only supposed to take a short amount of time to journey there. Um, but if you read the Old Testament, obviously there were a lot of difficulties, a lot of challenges that came up as um, all of these people um, did this mass exodus um, out of Egypt to travel to the promised land. One of the things that God uh, promised, that God committed to the nation of Israel was his presence. His promise was that his presence would always be with them and would lead them. And it was going to be in the form of a cloud and a pillar of fire. And uh, let me read what it says in Exodus chapter 40, verse 38. It says that the cloud of the Lord was above the tabernacle by day. The tabernacle was kind of like the church. That's where uh, the religious activities would take place. That was sort of the hub, the center focus, uh, and everything else would camp um, around it. And so for the cloud of the Lord was above the tabernacle by day and fire was over it by night in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. So it was a sign and it was to be a reminder to the nation of Israel that God's presence was there and that God's presence was going to lead them. What a beautiful picture and a reminder to us. One of my favorite verses is found in Joshua 1.9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened, do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And the thing I love about that is that promise that was spoken of thousands of years ago is the same promise that is for you and me. That we can be strong, that we can be courageous, that we don't have to be fearful, that we don't have to be frightened because the Lord is with us wherever we go. He is always there. And so as God was going to leave, lead, excuse me, the nation of Israel, he was going to lead them by day via a cloud and by night via this pillar of fire. And so verses 15 and 16 says, on the day that the tabernacle was set up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, the tent of the testimony. And at evening it was over the tabernacle like the appearance, appearance of fire until morning. So it was always the cloud covered it by day and the appearance, the appearance of fire by night. And then it goes on to say, uh, what was the response supposed to be of the nation of Israel? Verse 17, whenever the cloud lifted from over the tent, after that, the people of Israel set out. And in the place where the cloud settled down, there the people of Israel camped. So when the cloud moved and was on the move, the nation of Israel would pack things up and they would follow the cloud until it rested wherever it was. And then that was where they were to set up again. Verse 18, at the command of the Lord, the people of Israel set out. And at the command of the Lord, they camped. Now that phrase, the command of the Lord, that's going to be key here because we're going to see that a number of times throughout these verses. The end of verse 18, as long as the cloud rested over the tabernacle, they remained in the camp. So that's how it worked. The cloud moved, the children moved. The cloud stopped, the children stopped. One of my favorite commentators, um, David Guzik, he says this, when the cloud moved, Israel moved. When the cloud stayed, Israel stayed. They only went where the presence of God led them, and they only stayed where the presence of God stayed. And so the idea behind this was that the nation of Israel would be so in tune with the presence of God that they would only go where he went and they would only stay where he was. 
Oh man, that is so challenging at times uh, for me, isn't it? Uh, do you ever find that challenging uh, when you're wanting to do something and God is not allowing it? Or God is wanting you to stay still and you're wanting to move? Or God is telling you to wait during a time like this pandemic and we're saying, no, I want things to be how it was. It can be so challenging. But nevertheless, God, uh, his presence and um, his desire to work and move is always, always there. And I find it so interesting as we continue on in, in the next few verses. Uh, it tells us in verse 20 that sometimes the cloud was a few days over the tabernacle. Verse 21, it tells us sometimes the cloud remained from evening until morning. And then verse 22, the first part tells us whether it was two days or a month or a longer time that the cloud continued over the tabernacle abiding there, the people of Israel remained in camp and they did not set out. But when it lifted, they set out. Now this is kind of crazy to me and a little bit ironic because here you have, it says sometimes the cloud would stay in one spot uh, for a few days. Sometimes it was just one day from evening until morning. Other times it was for a few days or even a month or even as it says in verse 22, for a longer time. Now, one of the things we need to keep in mind is that this was not just a family of four going on a camping trip, setting things up for a few days, tearing it down and going home. Uh, the Bible tells us in Exodus 12, 37, there was about 600,000 men on foot besides women and children who left Egypt. So there is a lot of people. Imagine the work that goes into setting up camp. So you get everything set up, the cloud stops, you get everything set up, and then you wake up the next morning and the cloud is moving, and you had to tear everything down and you had to get on the move. That would be so difficult, wouldn't it? After all the work that you did, and then you gotta just tear it down and get moving. At the same time, there were times when it was a month or longer so now imagine that you see the clouds settle, you set up camp, you get everything together, and then you're just waiting, and you're waiting. Days go by, weeks go by, months go by. And you're wondering, geez, Louise, when in the world are we gonna get moving? I wanna get going. And so whether it's something that happens really fast and we're frustrated, or something that happens really, really slow and we're frustrated, uh, kind of the challenge is, is, Lord, how do we remain confident in who you are, confident that your presence is with us, no matter if things are happening super fast or if things are not happening and we're in this period of wondering what is going on. And that's why um, God is wanting to remind us, just as he was reminding the nation of Israel, um, that no matter what, which of those we're in, whether it's happening fast and we're frustrated or whether it's not happening and we're frustrated, that God is still there and he's still working and his presence is always with us. It's never left us. And so for me, as I've just looked and had a lot of time over the past six months as the orphanage had to temporarily close um, because of COVID and we had to drastically just change basically everything that we do. I've just had to say, Lord, do I believe that your presence is still here? And I'll be honest with you guys, there's been times when I felt like, Lord, is this it? Or are you wanting us to leave? Are you wanting us to pack up and, and go? Is the cloud moving? Lord, are you, are you leading us back to states? And you know what? Even in the midst of everything right now, the cloud, the presence of the God for us is here. And we're not to leave. We're not to move. No matter what happens, no matter if things are shut down, no matter if things are drastic, no matter if, if no teams come down and no golf tournaments happen and everything is canceled, if the cloud is not moving, if God is not leading, then we have to stay put. And while that's easier said than done, um, we can take courage knowing that the Lord um, is going to sustain us. He's going to give us what we need. And I want to close with this verse in Psalm 27, 13 and 14. 
It says, I would have lost heart unless I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, let your heart take courage, wait for the Lord or wait on the Lord. And so my heart is encouraged, even though it's everything is drastically different, I am still believing that I am going to see the goodness of the Lord. Why? Because his presence is still there, because he is still working. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so I just wanna encourage you guys that are watching, um, don't grow weary, don't grow tired, don't give up, don't, don't be willing to throw in the towel. Believe that you're gonna see the goodness of the Lord. Believe that you're gonna see God do something mighty during this time. And while you're um, waiting for that, you're waiting on him. And you're waiting on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who promises to be with us wherever we go. He'll never leave us, he'll never forsake us. And so I just pray that that encourages you this morning um, where you're at in your life personally, as a family, spiritually, all of those things. I just pray uh, that you would be reminded that his presence is with you and the goodness of the Lord is coming. And I'm excited to see what that looks like in my life and our, our ministry down here and for all of you up there. So God bless you guys. Thank you so much uh, for letting me be a part of um, this time together. Take care. Well, hey students, I am here with Jason Sanchez live from Bashinova, Mexico, and wanted to jump on Zoom like many of you online students are doing and uh, just sort of drill down into some of the points that he just shared with us. And so Jason, we just want to thank you so much for sharing God's word with us this morning and uh, excited hey. to just be able to talk to you, man. Thank you. It was, uh, yeah, it's a blessing to be a part of this. Yeah, so a couple of questions for you. Just uh, you talked about moving to Mexico and God leading us in his presence. For you as a missionary, being born and raised in the States and then going to Mexico, how did God lead you to actually make that jump, that move? Yeah, so it was actually pretty, um, pretty incredible. I had been pastoring for nine years and we felt like that season was coming down as a youth pastor, worship pastor, but the Lord hadn't said what was next. And so, like I shared, that too was a season of waiting. And just we just felt uh, this stirring, but we didn't want to go until he moved us. And I was actually down here in Bashinaba on a missions trip. Uh, no, no, it wasn't a missions trip. It was just with my wife and daughter. Uh, we were just vacationing, hanging out with our family down here. And I went for a walk with my aunt and we passed this beautiful building that was uh, a nursing home, just kind of finished being built. And just out of nowhere, she said, wouldn't it be so cool if God wanted to have an orphanage down here? And I'll tell you, it was like the Shekinah glory, the heavens open, and the Lord just literally was like, this is what I have for you. And I knew because of how my wife is, I was like, how in the world am I going to tell her, hey, we're leaving everything we know and all of our family to do this. And so I waited, I think, a day, and then we were walking, and uh, I just said, I know this is going to sound crazy. And I laid it out there and her response was incredible. She said, yeah, I think the Lord is leading us. So that right there was just confirmation that it was time to start praying specifically on coming down here. Yeah. And then obviously the Lord led you to Mexico. I even visited you when, you know, yeah. it was an apple orchard. You were praying about buying the land. Now it's become a, you know, is it 35, uh, 100 square foot orphanage now or how many no feet no the orphanage is 7500 square feet 75. i mean yeah yeah when we came down here it was we had no idea i had no training i mean we didn't even know if what we could do was technically legal it was literally just like go for it because the cloud the presence of god was moving and so we did and even in coming down here uh it just took a long time to even 
just to see what the Lord was wanting to do exactly. But from the time we bought the property, 40 acres, to starting to build, that happened within a few weeks uh, of being down here. So it happened really, really quick. Yeah. And then how many kids have this, has the orphanage since you first came down there? Like how many kids have gone through that ministry? We, I think last time I checked, it was close to 60 kids uh, okay. that have come throughout the five years that we've been open. We've been here for eight years, uh, but be, you know, building and doing all that stuff, all the paperwork and everything. So since the doors open, I think it's been close to 60 kids uh, the most we had at one time was 24 kids, and it ranged anywhere from uh, two years old to 18 years old. Yeah, and so that was obviously a big jump for you to go from fast-paced America, where you can yeah. go see a movie, go to restaurants, do whatever you want, basically, to Mexico, where it was a small town of 2,000 people and yeah. really nothing. Can you give us some encouragement or advice? Like we feel like going through a pandemic with the stay at home orders, we've had all this different stuff. And, and now it's like, we're sort of bored of Netflix. There's nothing to do. Like how did God lead you slowing down? Yeah. So it's kind of interesting. I feel like as everyone is adjusting to this pandemic and talking with us and saying, Oh, it's been so hard. We can't go to restaurants. We can't go to movies. We can't do this. And we're like, we haven't really been able to do that for the last eight years because when we came down here, I mean, there wasn't even internet. There wasn't 3G, like phone signal. It was Edge. I, I don't know if those kids understand what Edge is. It's the little E that's on your phone. I mean, I had to get up at four in the morning and use a 10-foot USB to uh, a internet stick to try to send the email. So it wasn't like we had an option. We were just thrust into it. And it was basically the Lord saying, you have to just 100% adjust your thinking, uh, how you do things, and realize that this is your new um, way of living. So it was, um, I mean, kind of like, I guess, coronavirus, people were just thrust into it, but there, you know, at least you can still you know, rent movies, you can still order, take out Uber Eats. I mean, there was just nothing down here, literally nothing. Plus, you don't speak the language. Plus, you're trying to adjust to uh, living in a room off of a church building. Um, so, yeah, it was the Lord was definitely saying, um, I'm going to change uh, how you're going to do things. But again, man, his presence and just it was kind of a natural sustaining that he just kind of supernaturally worked it out for us. Yeah. Because it gives us hope because, you know, you went through a change, but yet God has been faithful to you. And even though Absolutely. you had to adjust your lifestyle, um, yeah. you know, you're surviving and not just surviving, you're thriving now. And so, yeah. um, you know, it's and really what's, cool. what's, what's one of the things that people always say in the States when we're super busy? Oh, I don't have time to pray or things have been so crazy. I didn't get to do my devos or I didn't have time for this. And during things like pandemics or when we first moved down here, we have more time than we know what to do with. And it was with that was when the Lord said, and I think really not having internet, not having Netflix, not having all those things to turn to, it was literally, what do we do? And so it was, diving into his word, um, praying, seeking him. I mean, so many different things that, uh, I mean, I was really, even though it was challenging, really, really thankful for that time that we had. That's awesome. Well, hey, man, would you pray for our students, for us, even in the States right now, to that we would take that challenge and continue to dive in, and as we adjust, that we would seek God's presence? Yeah, absolutely. Lord, just thank you so much, God. Thank you that um, just as the, the verse in Psalms says, Lord, that uh, we will see the goodness of the Lord. And uh, thank you that your presence is with us, Lord. Thank you that even right now, even if it's via Zoom and we're not together in person, Lord, uh, that you are there. You still are working. You're still moving. You still want to minister to these kids' hearts and their lives. So just bless uh, everyone's day, Lord. 
And uh, we look forward to seeing the things you're going to continue to do in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, brother. Well, we love you, man. And Amen. Uh, it was great talking to you. Thanks again so much for sharing with us today. Yeah, you too. God bless you guys.